Hi folks, in this video we are going to have a look at Cucumber Hooks and I would be using Java as my platform. So what do we mean by Cucumber Hooks? Now Cucumber official documents describes it as a block of code that can be run at various points in Cucumber execution cycle. This though being a very apt definition is not very exact in terms of its functionality. So to understand it better, we can say that hooks are blocks of code that can be run before or after every scenario or before or after every step of every scenario. Right. Now to implement this in our code, we use add the rate before to mark the code that should be run before every scenario and add the rate after to mark the code that should be run after every scenario. Similarly, we use add the rate before step and add the rate after step to mark the code that needs to be run before and after every step. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see all this in action. Okay, to save you from watching me type all the time, I have already written down most of the code. Okay, let's just go through it once and then we can move ahead with the execution of it. So I have got uh, two feature files wherein I have got actually four scenarios in one one two three four and one scenario outline in the other feature file wherein i'm just using one example so in total i have got four test cases or five or sorry in total i have got five test cases right now the con the contents of this test cases are pretty simple i am considering a normal hypothetical login feature right wherein my first scenario i'm trying to log into the particular page and in my second scenario i'm trying to log in with invalid credentials and in my third one i'm just verifying for the company logo and in my fourth one i'm trying to initiate a forgot password flow right and in my next feature file i'm just trying to log in with different user user data okay so these all are just uh, i would say empty implementations wherein in my steps file or in my self definition i have just given simple print statements okay and i have done the same for my data steps also right so i'm actually having two separate classes for my step definitions this will be very useful as we move ahead okay now let's have a look at my run for a run file and in my run file as i'm using just test ng i have done run extends abstract test ng cucumber tests okay and for my cucumber options i've just I've given where my feature files are right so i'm just including the folder level address so this will consider all the feature files that are present in my resources folder then i'm giving my glue that is my step definitions and finally i'm just using a plugin json target to get json output files okay now in addition to this i also have got quite a few tags over here right uh, we would be using this in the video if need be okay so first let's just run this once and see what we get as an output okay while this is running uh, I forgot to show you one thing in my steps file actually I have already implemented two hooks okay I am using the before hook and after hook and as we discussed the, these would we, uh, these would run before and after every scenario okay and inside my before and after hook I have just added few demarcations and I am just printing before hook for before hook and after after hook for after hook and to denote these or I to associate these functions to before and after hooks I am using the tag add the rate before and add the rate after from cucumber.io okay and I have named these as setup and tear down these are just conventions you can name it whatever you want okay now let's look at our output so we can see that one two three four five uh, five test cases ran and I can see I've got before hook and after hook before my steps uh, print statement okay so let's look at them individually so individually I can see this is there is a before hook there is a after hook there is a before hook there is a after hook right so this setup and tear down or rather this before hook and after hook ran for each and every scenario one interesting thing to note over here is that my setup 
and tear down were written in only my steps java right so it was written in only this particular class and it was not written in data step uh, data step class okay so let's have a look at data steps it was not written in my data steps but when we ran the script or when we ran the program it got executed even for the steps that were written in some other class that being said what does that signify it actually tells us that these are independent of the class right so these are not dependent on which class they are written uh, so keeping that in mind is generally a very common or rather say i would rather say that it's generally a very good practice to write the hooks in a separate class altogether so that you can it is easier to track otherwise if you have got you know multiple step definition classes and in any one classes there is a particular hook written it will be executed and it will be difficult to find where that exact where that hook is right okay so next it is not uh, necessary for us to have just a single before hook or just a single after hook we can have multiple also so let's just say if i type in another before hook over here you will see just paste it control v this will also run i'll name it as setup to rather okay before hook let's name it two okay so this will also work and it will execute both of them let's run it once verify fine it ran both for every case every case it first ran before hook then it ran the other before hook then it ran the steps then finally the after hook similarly we can have multiple after hooks also now as we have multiple right so or rather i would say when we have multiple we would want to control which hook executes when right so for that we can actually set up its priority or rather set up its order so let's go back to my steps and with the before tag i will just do order right and by default order is 1000 so if you just set up order in once and one particular before hook and not in the other particular before hook this will always be executed first so for this i will say order as one and for the particular for the next one i'll say order sorry not over here order as or rather let's just do this as one and let's keep keep this as two okay so first my before hook two should come in my output and next before hook okay now let's just run this once i'll go back to my run and i'll run this right before hook two before hook fine okay so these were our scenario level now let's have a look at our step level hooks and for that i will just go ahead and change this before rather i'll just remove the order over from the, both my before tags of both my before hooks and then change the next second before hook into before step right and let's just get rid of this parentheses also and in my print statement i will write before step similarly let's get an after step also for that i just copy this control c paste it over here right after step and just tear down aim it as step tier and in a print statement i will write over here after step 
and for demarcations let's change these demarcations right uh, let's get let's just add star so that would be good so let's start, 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 start. And let's just copy this i'll do the same for my before step change the demarcations And then also change the function name as step 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 setup and get rid of these two words. Okay, now let's execute this once. Fine, so all my scenarios ran. Let's have a look at the order of our execution of hooks. Let's look at the first one. Right, so first we got before hook, then before step, then the particular step, then after step, then again before step, then particular step, then after step, so on and so forth. Okay, again, similarly, we can have multiple before and after step hooks and then prioritize them by order. Okay, let's try that once again. So these demarcations are a little too heavy, right? So let's do one thing, get rid of one line from here and let's get rid of this line from here. Okay. And let's add, okay, this, this time let's add multiple after step. So I will go over here, control C. And I will name it two, and I'll name it two again. Okay, now let's add our order argument to our after step tag or our after step hook. I'll give here order equal to one. Sorry, it's step two, so I'll write order equal to step two, and for the other one, I'll give order. Right, so this is step one, this is step two. Now let's run this. So everything ran, let's look at the order of our hooks. So first, my before hook ran, fine. Then my before step ran, okay. Then my step, particular step ran, okay. Then I can see after step two over here. And then after step one. Why was that? In our order, we, st we said step 1 was order 1 and step 2 was order 2. Right. And if, we, if you remember from your before operations, the order 1 was executed first, next order 2. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's have multiple before step also and provide an order to that. So go back to my steps. Copy this before step. Paste it, name it as step 2, before step 2, before step 1, let's add in our order, O-R-D-E-R equal to 1, and over here order equal to 2. Okay. Now let's run this. Okay, so this would give us a better picture. First, let's open an individual test. So first my before hook ran, then my before step order one, then before step order two, then the particular step, then after step order two, then after step order one. So in conclusion, we can say that the after, in after hooks, the order of step is reversed. So it comes in descending order. The highest order will come first, would be executed first and the lower order would be executed after that. Okay, so that was all for this one. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.